Okay, um, I started recording now, so it is what it is. I'm gonna clap. There we go. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to do, right? Whenever you start a podcast, you're supposed to clap. Um, I think... Do I necessarily need it? I mean, like, the reason why is like, so you can sync audio, but I suppose it's already synced, isn't it? Well, I mean, I say that, I can't actually hear the game right now. I've either turned that down significantly, or... Uh, my audio is not working right now. The game upgraded to a newer version. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. Right. Okay. I should really give this a formal intro then, I think. Um, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am Mr. Stephen Lee, also known as Stephen. Steph, uh, badass hunk dude, you McGregor's son. Um, uh, b- belly blue eyes. Well, my eyes are green. Um, Jerry green eyes. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't really know. What other nicknames people give me? Probably many derogatory ones, but I pretend that they don't exist. You know, that's how I get through my days, you know? Is it just... This guy's parked in the grass! Look at that picture on the right-hand side. Both of those cars are parked in the grass. What is going on? Even the truck in the background! Euro truck! What are you doing? SCS software, this is... Actually, no, I was going to say this isn't accurate, but this could be accurate, actually. This could just be like a shadow where people park in grass. You don't park in grass, man. Honestly, I used to be a gardener, bro, right? And when I was a gardener, like, grass... uh, I've learned to understand that grass is sacred. It is a beautiful thing that someone always takes care of. I'm telling you. Okay, maybe all the time, man. I mean, my garden's a fucking riot right now. But it's winter, all right? You can't cut grass in winter. Well, you can. But it's dangerous because you can... Well, actually, I don't know the science behind this whatsoever, but I'm pretty sure, you know, my bro science is uh, going to come in clutch here. And I'm going to tell you that if you cut grass in the winter, then it makes it uh, susceptible to frost damage, right? That's what you don't want. You don't know we have that. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, yes, um, I'm starting a podcast, but I'm... Oh, fucking Jesus. Well, that's a great start to the podcast. There we go, guys. Uh, uh, well, yes, uh, my microphone is very temperamental, so this is probably going to happen quite often. If you don't know already, I stream on twitch.tv forward slash Mr. Stephen Lee. Um, I have for about two and a half years now. Um, we've got a real decent community there. Um, always growing, always, uh, yeah, meeting new people, and just, I've really loved it, uh, as I've gone through, it's been the only constant thing, uh, <laughs> I always say this, right, and it is true, however, it also sounds, like, hilarious, because, and, like, very pedestal standing, because it's absolute bullshit that I'm gonna say this, right, but, streaming's the longest job I've ever held, <laughs> I say job, I mean, fuck, is streaming a job, can you really say that, I, I suppose it depends on what you do, like, if you're, like, an esports uh, streamer, then, you know, you're hard grinding all the time. Or, um, I don't know, I don't know, I suppose you could just, you could still be a hard grinding without being an esports boy or girl, um, or anyone in between. You know, it'd be very, very fine. Anyway, the way I do it, though, is, um, I always feel I'm just a massive pepega, so to call it a job is, um, yeah, that feels a little bit out of control to say that. But, um, it is the most constant thing I've done, um, over three years or so. Well, almost three years. It'll be three years in May. So, about, what, two years and seven, eight months. So, yeah, um, happy, merry 2021, by the way. What do we call that, by the way? 2021 is far too much to say in, like, a sentence. 2020 was very easy. It was like, da 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 You know, but 2021 is like, da You know, it's far too much. It's like, oh, like, uh, I remember back in 2021. You don't want to say that because, like, if you think about someone that goes, like, think of Joey Diaz, right, the main man himself, it's like, let me tell you, back in 82, he never says 1982, right, unless, I don't know, he's more, I don't know, I mean, it does happen, but not all the time, like, I would say, like, 20% of the time, you actually say the full fucking 19, whatever, usually you just say, like, uh, back in 69, actually, I don't know, I wonder if you only say that if you lived it. Because thinking about it now, I would 100% say, like, 1945 or 1927. I would never just say 27. But I suppose it's because we're getting closer now, and it's like, you mean in the future or the past, bro? You're kind of, like, defending it. Um, I'm just talking shit now. I suppose that's exactly what a podcast is going to be with me on it. Um, Yeah, but my main reason... Hold on. Ah, you know, you got to get those sniffs out sometimes, man. I'm telling you, right? Too many people, right? They, uh, they're they too scared of farting, sniffing, and burping, right? I'm going to tell you one thing. Even the queen does that shit, I know. And my mother does too, right? And I, I didn't believe it myself. But I remember, right, it's, uh, it still haunts me to this day, that uh, my big, my little brother and I were uh, in the living room just watching TV. So my mom thought that we couldn't hear her, and she walked into the kitchen, and she had a fart, dude. And my little brother and I looked at each other, and we're like, what the fuck was that? 
Mom doesn't fart, bro. Um, but she did, obviously. And uh, yeah, ever since then, my entire world has been, you know, exploded open into like many possibilities. Now I don't know what the fuck's real. Um, it is what it is. Shut the fuck up, Stephen. You're talking some shit here. Um, what was I talking about? I had like another thing. Oh yes, the years. So basically, twenty one is what I'm calling it. I'm calling. 2021-21, right? We're in our 20s now, you know. Um, what, what do we call it? We can't call it the Roaring 20s. The the Woeful 20s? Can we call it that so far? Because it's been pretty shite so far, hasn't it? 20 and 21. However, right, and now, this isn't controversial, or if it is, it shouldn't be, and if you think it is controversial, you're an arsehole, right? And you can't see the bigger perspective. Um, the main thing I want to say right here is that the 2020 coronavirus, everything going tits up and good people dying and just, uh, I mean, I had fucking, I had both my grandes die. I, in the beginning, I had, um, I had, I fell out with my big brother and so uh, he kicked me out of his house. Um, so I went to a friend's house and everything was going smoothly. Um, I was like thinking, fuck yeah, dude, 2020 is going to be the year I get my financials sorted. I've got a proper job. I was actually delivering uh, parcels, which is hilarious for like a Eurotruck thing. Uh, but like, because that's all, I've got like 650 hours in Eurotruck, which to many gamers, uh, that, that's not actually that much. But for me, that is, that's a lot of time in the game. Um, but anyway, so I was doing that in real life. Um, you know, and like I was getting about a hundred pound a day. It was really fucking good. And then coronavirus happened. So all of a sudden, my friend came back home. I moved to my friend's house, who was away in the Merchant Navy. Um, so he was going to be away until about June or July, and I was just paying like a really, uh, you know, mate rate uh, rent for staying in his place. Um, and it was a two bedroom flat. So I was staying with one of my mates that I actually met at a TwitchCon. Um, which was really cool how it all came together. I'll tell you that story another day. Um, but um. Big Will, fucking legend. But Greg himself, the guy that was way in the Merchant Navy, he had to come back home because of coronavirus. You know, people didn't know what the fuck was going on. Industry was shutting down everywhere. And so we came back, and there was three lads in a two-bedroom flat, and he actually owned the flat. So I was like, bro, I am 100% the third wheel here. This is an, an, I'm in an awkward position. How do I get out of this? And I was, like, after about two weeks or so, um, I kind of just decided I was going to go back home, which meant that I had to throw away the job I was having. But, I mean, to be fair... Um, I don't know if I was going to be able to stay in that job just because of coronavirus and stuff, but it was delivery, which is something that will always be around, so... God damn it, man! I'm sniffing like a motherfucker! Oh, but we'll be always around, especially with every, the fact that everyone's at home. Um, people will be, you know, like, buying shit. Um, so you've always got to deliver things. Um, so that's always going to be a solid job in a pandemic. Um, but yeah, so I was like, fuck it, I'll go back home. But before that happened, we got absolutely smashed, as you imagine. Um, when you're out in the Merchant Navy, you're not actually allowed to drink in the ship. Um, I think there's some ships or companies that let you, pardon me, um, but most of them don't. Um, and so he hadn't had any booze in like two months um, at this point. So when he came back, we just got absolutely off our faces, man. Sloshed, fucking terribly... <laughs> I had a terribly <laughs> awful and uh, it was a delightful night up until this point that we were playing cards together and there was uh, this thing called the King's Cup. I'm not sure if you've ever done this before. It's pretty simple. What you do is you get all the dregs of the bottles around you. So like you've had a few beers at this point. So we fucking pour it all into this one big cup. Yeah, and then you want to go around and get like as many different alcohols as you possibly can. So we had like gin in there, wine. Um, I think there was some rum. Um, just like everything that was possible and a whole like slosh of different beers as well. So it just tastes absolute rank. And it was about, I would say, 250 milliliters, 300 milliliters, you know, that not that much if you're american get fucking real man and have some real measurements i say that though this is a thing right see in in britain we have the weirdest measurement and weight and uh what is that is it measurement and weight i suppose that's what you'd say right even for a liquid um yeah is that right i think that's right right you just say measurement and the weight uh, it doesn't matter right we have the weirdest thing because of the fact that um our distance in a car is yards and miles right but you go to measure say um something like on a building site it's going to be in millimeters or centimeters most likely millimeters so it's more precise right you're not using inches whenever you're working like that yet if you want to know how like big a size of trousers or jeans or whatever the fuck to get you're using inches then you're using inches all of a sudden. Whenever you measure yourself, like your height, it's in uh, feet and inches. Like, what the fuck's going on there? So, like, we have, like, a mad hybrid of both um, the uh, imperial system and the... I want to say the mercury system. I was The, the merit system. I just completely f forgot what it was called. Well, this is great. Uh, what's, what's it called? The imperial and... 
the metric. Look at that. I, I see that's it. I didn't utilize Google there. This is another thing, right? Another fu- and another thing. I think that's what I'm going to call the podcast. I don't actually have a name for it. And another thing with Mr. Stephen Lee. Or and another thing with Stephen. Uh, what did I say? And another thing. I don't know. Or or did you? I, I mean, it was not. It's not that um. That sketch, is it, was it Kevin Bridges that said that he wanted to start a, that's a Scottish comedian if you don't know where, um, he said he wanted to start a talk show called Digi Eye, um, basically to have various celebrities come on and tell them stories uh, that were maybe a bit more far-fetched and like uh, in proper Scottish way, you could just be like, did you I? Because that's like a big thing, man. Whenever you're talking and saying something, especially in Glasgow, though, you see, it's a more a Glasgow thing, I think. Um, but you say, did you I? As if to say, like, you're full of shit, you know? That was quite good, that. Um, what else I was talking about now? Um, I, I was talking about measurement and stuff. What was the point of that? Oh, yeah, the King's Cup. Yes, coming back to the King's Cup. I have another thing about Kings as well to talk about. This is great. Dude, I fucking love having a podcast now. I can just talk shit and not have to worry about chat. You see, usually this is how I stream, but I'm talking to people. So I love that. that that's amazing, right? But this is, like, one of the best, most cathartic ways just to get, like, spew out thoughts from my mind, you know? And I also like to turn this... um. I I think having like in the background like Euro Truck or whatever, I haven't even driven yet, man. It's just like look at my sexy truck, which is beautiful by the way. Look at that man. Look at that pink truck, man. It's kinda hot, right? Um but realistically I wanna get as many guests on as I can, like get the homies just to talk shit to. Um but I'm not going to necessarily have cameras on. Um I kinda think that like I remember I had a conversation with someone once, um, this is like two years ago, and they're a streamer now as well, they're a lot more successful than me, um, but they said to me that they believed that radio was dying, that audio was dying, and I whole, whole, wholeheartedly, pause jam, uh, I can't say that, oh my god, pause poggers, oh god, if you want to know that, fucking, I'll tell you that later, uh, <laughs> they said that it was going to die, that radio and audio was done for, and that video was the way forward, you know, like, because she was a live streamer, and it made sense, I understood that, but... I believe, um, just from my own experience, like, podcasts, like, people want to listen and do something else, um, almost all the time now. Like, um, I don't know if you're having a shite in the shower, washing the dishes, out a walk, um, whatever you're doing, you're most likely you have some form of audio on, even... If you're on your PC doing something, like drawing something, even if you're talking, uh, maybe not talking to someone, that's a bit different. Um, but like music is exactly the same thing um, for audio, but it was just podcasts that people now listen to. So they have it on Spotify or whatever, which I'm going to work out to see how I can put this on Spotify. I think that'd be kind of cool. Um, but yeah, like I really thought that that was a really naive thing to think. I was like, no way, dude. If anything, it's going to grow because there's more and more ways to listen to audio. Um Now, having video itself is always a smart idea to do as well. Um, But using Eurotalk in the background, like kind of having like a back... I like to say like it's background visuals is what I always call it on stream whenever I do like a a stream like this with Eurotalk because honestly, all I'm doing for that is just trying to keep some kind of constant going on um, on stream. So it's not just my face talking to people, which I, of course, do. Um, but it's kind of the only constant is the fact that we're finishing a journey. We're driving from one place to the next. And that's really nice. I like that. Um, and uh, obviously, chat's the constant as well. Um, but it's, it's nice, man. Like, whenever, whenever you have something in the background that you can kind of follow along. Like, I, I remember back in the day, like, doing, like, commentaries like call, on Call of Duty. So what you do is, like, I used to be a knifer only uh, player. So I would record a gameplay for, say, I don't know, dude. Um, I would say two hours of gameplay that you would just record. Um, and you pick your best games or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Just as many best games as you could, you collect them. Um, and then you put that in the background whilst you just talk about something. You just, like, create some topic that you want to like uh fly into or you just ad lib and like throw yourself into it and see what happens um and then you you'd wrap it up at the end of one of those um commentaries or you could just go absolute free will and then later on put the um put the video in the background so right now i think this is actually kind of better because this will go on for as long as i'm talking shit for um i'm going to try and keep everything under like uh, say an hour and a half. Like, I'll probably keep it like as low as I can. Unless it's with someone else, then it would probably be a bit different. Um, but if it's just me shouting at you, then uh, yeah, I don't think that would necessarily be the most optimum content, dude. Uh, speaking of content, I think I'm going to absolutely... Uh, I was going to say revolutionize, but I don't think that's the right word, is it? Um, reface, maybe? Um, my YouTube. Uh, just change everything, probably 
unlist every video except from ones that are relevant to streaming um now um or i make a new one but the problem is is that i already have mr stephen lee um which has some subscribers you know there is some people on there um so yeah, I think I'll I'll just I'll take away a lot because I think I've got like three hundred videos or something crazy, um, which is kind of mental actually. But it's just from like I've had that channel for like ten years, and I used to make a lot of Call of Duty videos, as I say, like commentaries and uh, montages and stuff like that. So I think that um. I'm far past that. I'm a very different person. I don't even know what the fuck happened, dude. Like, I swear to God that my balls dropped in the last year. <laughs> I don't even know how it happened, right? But I look back on stream. So this is only in the last two years, right? On stream, I look back at old clips, and I legit sound like a, a, a squirrel. I swear to God. I'm like, hey, guys, it's so good to meet you. How's it going? Like, I, that used to be how I sounded. Now... I do a lot of voice acting as well. I actually haven't done any in a little while, so if you want to hire a badass voice actor, then, uh, yo, uh, how you doing? Just uh, slipping my DMs, you know what I'm saying? Slipping my DMs. Um, anyway, um, yeah, I think maybe just trying to emulate a character, like, not necessarily a, like, defined character, but just be a character on stream instead of being myself was my initial way to do it. Um... I never felt that uh, streaming was that different from actually making a YouTube video. I kind of felt like it was exactly the same, but it was just live, you know, especially in the, the beginning days where um, you didn't have uh, an active chat, so you wouldn't really have people to talk to. You know, like, that's that's the thing. You're basically making a video anyway. Um, and then every once in a while, people would start talking, and nowadays I can talk to quite a decent amount of people, which is uh, a very much a privilege, but we have worked for it for two and a half years, so, you know, it, it is that, it is that, and we've all built it together. Like, I always like to say that, like, I'm I'm just the, the spearhead of all this, but the real, you know, thrust behind it, Posh Jam, um, is the community around me. So, you know, I'm a very fortunate guy to have anyone to talk to at all. So, yeah, I always feel very grateful to have, like, the Steph fam around me. Especially Discord, dude. Discord's so much fun. I love waking up and, like, scrolling through all the channels. If you want to join the Discord, all of that's in the, the description and stuff. Um, it's basically a bunch of people talking shit um, and posting funny memes. Um, that sounds so cringe. Funny memes, man? You want to see some memes? I bet you never see any memes on the... Uh on the internet, dude! Uh, no, it's not like that. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, just good content, and I don't know, like, uh, yeah, it's a nice wee community place to be, and we're obviously, there's, like, voice channels in there, too, that you can jump into, and, uh, we play games together. I've been playing a lot of Valorant recently, dude. I absolutely adore that game. There's something about it that's so unique, like, I just, I always wanted to... Um, I don't know, like, I, I was a bit adamant to, to always be a controller boy, I was like, no, no, I need to use my remote to play PUBG on the PC, no, no, I'll just connect to you, I can't wait for cross-platform, baby, like, for, for the consoles, you know, and, like, uh, Call of Duty happened, like, uh, Warzone and stuff, and that was all cross-platform, and that was really cool, um, like, I could play with some of the boys on PC that I've been talking to for a good while, but, um, yeah, I just, I, I don't know, I, no game really captured my fancy for FPS using keyboard and mouse. Even CSGO, like, CSGO for me was so boring, and everyone was so good at it. I was like, why am I even, I, I had no intention to get better. I was like, this is shit. I don't feel satisfied when I get a kill. It just doesn't feel like anything's actually stonks within it, you know? If you grew up with that, then it'd be very different. Maybe that's how I see Call of Duty. Um, especially, like, the earlier Call of Duties, like, COD 4 and Modern Warfare 2 and stuff like that. Uh, Black Ops 1 and, you know, all the zombie stuff. Um, like, I see that as being my childhood and, you know, my coming of age uh, kind of content. So, whenever... Whenever that's uh, on, and whenever I think about gaming, that's, like, my highest moments, as well as, like, Halo 3 as well. Like, uh, Halo 3 was fantastic. Um, but, um, yeah, Valorant's completely changed that. You know, I played a bit of Overwatch as well, which was good crack. I did enjoy playing Hanzo. Um, and, of course, uh, I'm the next Hanzo as Sova on Valorant. And I really enjoy playing as him, man. It's just, like... Uh, you get, like, bounce-off arrows to, like, find enemies and stuff and, like, utilize your environment in order to kill enemies. Like, you can bounce arrows off of stuff. And it's so cool. You know, it's just, like, I really did enjoy, or do enjoy, the, the art style of Valorant and, like, the lore behind it. I've been watching all these, like, lore videos and it's so fascinating, dude. There's, like, such a 
community that's like uh, around it and it's so new as well it's only like a year old not even i don't think um so it's it's remarkable um i'm really enjoying it and also i get to play with like new people that are on ps pc you know um instead of it always being like console or like the games i can play with other people are you know not really fps or they're not games that people are necessarily playing um and i feel i've improved significantly um and i would say honestly i've only taken valorant i mean i say seriously but not like I'm like, okay, I need to, like, have at least four hours in today. You know, I just, like, playing well and playing competitive and actually getting good for about two months or so. So really not a long time. Um, but, yeah, it's been really good, man. And I guess to connect to other communities and then kind of strengthening, like, to understand who is the people in the community that want to play games. Um, right now it's really, like, Flomp, uh, Pepsi, Harley. Um, I mean... She's in my community, but it's more her community that I'm part of. Um, Jess plays her friend Molly, um, and Umque, I think, is uh, the other guy. I always fuck up his name. Um, but I've been playing with them a lot recently, and it's really good fun. You know, that's... Uh it's just it's good crack um to get to meet new people and you know work together with them because i've always had that with the boys growing up you know like from high school like uh my friend ewan and kai and ian matthew i mean there's a whole bunch of people that are like that i'm getting i'm being mobile right now who the fuck's calling me let's see this oh it's my uncle okay hold on i'll uh i'll be piece of the art of the beat well that's me back uh sorry about that uh just my uncle called me there he was getting a free view box now that's actually a thing who the fuck still has sky tv right realistically i don't know a single person that pays for that subscription unless they're over 40 right i, I swear to god man like it, there's a something's happened right i mean it, it's not something it's very obvious um people get shit online for free or super cheap uh, nowadays. So why the fuck would you pay for cable TV? Is that what we call it in the UK, by the way? Is that American? Yeah, I'll get my cable, dude. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's, uh, what, what we would call it. Satellite here? Satellite? Satellite television. I don't know, something like that. Um, but yeah, did very few people have Sky TV anymore? Like, it's just a thing. I suppose the only, like, even, even Sky itself is online. Like, you can watch football, like Sky Sports or Sky, uh, F1. Burn me, like, all online. You can watch all of that online now. Like, even BT Sport and all that. You do not need to have a box. Um, which is, uh, yeah, rather interesting to see that people are still talking about it. But basically, my, my uncle is looking to cancel Sky and get Freeview. Um, just because of the fact that, uh, yeah, that's what my mum did, like, I don't know, like, five years ago or something. And, like, the amount of money you save in it um, is next level. As well as the fact that you'd barely lose any channels whatsoever. Um, and they didn't even watch the channels that you got um, on Sky. You know, I think the the main one that was um, kind of out there, like, at least for me, I really liked was Discovery Channel. But you get, like, D-Max and stuff now, which is, like, kind of similar. Um, it's, uh, I think it's, like, I don't know what the fuck it is on Freeview. Like one four or something. I don't know, one of those weird ones. Um, but you get all the regular ones like BBC and STV and ITV, uh, Channel 4, Channel 5, fucking Gold. I don't, I don't know. Remember Bravo? Remember Bravo, the dog, the bounty hunter and all that shit, dude? What absolute stonks right there. Right, let, let's let's play let's play some of this, by the way. Um, it's only been 20 minutes. Um, there we go, dude. Uh, it'd have been so long that my mouse had turned off. <laughs> Speaking of which, dude, I really need to get a new mouse. My mouse is falling apart dude it's actually um a real crying shame and because like each time i play valorant like um there's only two buttons on it right and one of the buttons is to talk to people and the other one's to pull out my shock dart um which is uh which is can you hear that you can't hear it um which is a like uh an arrow thingy that you use on that and it's it's kind of cool it's kind of cool you know i like it um but at the same time um there's only two, so I need to push um, the keyboard for so many things. And also, like, uh, for Discord muting and whatnot, it's really annoying. So um, I need to, at some point, actually utilize uh, better buttons. But I've literally had this mouse for about three years, and it's still going strong. See, this is the thing. My entire setup, like uh, my keyboard and mouse setup, is less than 20 quid. I have a Microsoft... Microsoft what? Uh, wired Keyboard 600. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. It's cost me like eight pound, twelve pound, or something like that. This mouse costs less than a tenner. I'm telling you. So it's about twenty quid for this um for this uh, setup right here, and I still stomp noobs, bro. 
You know what I'm saying? Should we just do this one? Do like a wee short one? Let's do this one. Let's see how it goes. So basically, I used to do this series called Wee Hours, all right? Um, where I would drive... Wait, 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 wait. Is that, is that in here? Am I driving somewhere else, or is that in here? I think it's in here. Hold on, I'll turn right away. Um, I used to do this series called Wee Hours, which is when I used to stream a lot more erratically, and it would be about 2 in the morning. I would uh, not start, but still be streaming on uh euro truck and i would just call it wee hours after a while because that's obviously like you know the wee small hours in the day that you get um and it was a nice little cute name so this is kind of in you know honor of that dude um just because this will be very similar you know because we're driving in the on the truck and talking shit you know so i really do like that um and as i was saying before like the commentary um from back in the day that this is it's this is one of the most comfortable content uh i like to make and i haven't made it in actually years like legit years um i just only live stream dude and i feel like my youtube channel has significantly suffered and i'm not gonna lie to you i adore editing but more so for say like uh when i made the video for the boys um i got that truck right the trailer right here uh, when i made the video for the boys for the reverse sweep i don't know if you've seen that it's called um i'll put it as a card uh on the youtube uh, right now um, fuck, what's it called? Uh, <laughs> uh, I think it's, um, it's called The Dub. Yeah, I think it's called The Dub. Um, I don't know, a piss take series? It's called something like that, right? But it's really good. Um, and basically what happened is we went down 5-0 on, uh, Modern Warfare Search and Destroy. And if you're unaware, um, you have to get to 6 in order to win. Dude, am I, where the fuck am I going? The, honestly, see it points, this game, it, it's, it's one of the most difficult things to work out where you drive. I, I swear down. And obviously, like, I've got the snow mod on and stuff right now, so it's a little bit less visibility. That's not point. I mean, it's not obvious that this is the way out. They need, like, a big thing that says way out, you know? Also, there's a... I installed, like, a Star Wars mod, so you see that, like, Star Wars car just sitting, chilling out. It, it's quite cool, right? I like it. I should really show you my truck. I've got a Pikachu in here, some Nutella, a... Um, I always call that Dracula. A Dalek. Um, we've got a wee Sunflower. We've got R2-D2. We've got the Evil Santa from Futurama. We've got the Stig. We've got this cat here who I have, uh, his real name is Tekir, but I like to call him Tiggy because that's my cat that, um, sadly passed away this year. Um, so, well, 2020. Um, so I call him Tiggy Boy. And then we've got Iron Brew, uh, Pepsi, and a FaZe Clan sticker in the front there. Um, is that the Death Star? I think that's the Death Star. We've got the Death Star, then we've got football. So I think that's pretty stonks. Um, anything else? Yeah, it's the Premier Inn in the background, which I think is absolutely hilarious, having the Premier Inn uh, logo right there. See, the thing is, if you're not British, you probably don't know who that, what that is. And it's a hotel chain that uh, my mum and dad used to take myself and my big brother and my little brother to uh, when we were younger. So there you go, you can see the, the face sticker. And it says, too horny for you, which is what chap wanted. So I put four weird. Um, I'm glad I put forward and not weird champ because uh, the whole controversy of the guy that has the pog champ face, um, he was just an absolute cunt trying to uh, support the uh, coup of the capital in America, like the whole uh, MAGA martyr shit, dude. It was fucking unreal, dude. Um, so yeah, I was actually I was thinking a lot about this, right? I kind of think. Like, basically, he, if you're not aware, like, Twitch.tv has this extension called Better Twitch TV, and there's another one called Frankerface uh, Z, Frankerface Z, and basically what it does is it gives you extra emojis, so we, they're just called emotes, um, on Twitch, and they're really handy, you know, there's a lot of uh, customization you can get on there, and it's cool, you know, and this main thing was called PogChamp, which is actually part of Twitch, um, but people had extended it out to be Pog, so it's a more zoomed in face, Pog U, which is him looking directly at the camera, there's a lot of, like, like things like that, and then Weird Champ, which is, like, him with a kind of weird face, obviously, Pod Champ, which is him kind of looking up to something, like, looking forward to it, like, oh, what's gonna happen, oh, is this gonna happen now, it's like one of those faces, you know, and, like, whenever something silly happens you could say pause champ you know like oh you know it's it's funny it's kind of like oh it's cute you know and it's silly and it's good good fun but because this guy has suddenly come out as being uh an absolute fucking fan dan supporting these guys uh taking down the capital uh, he's the twitch have taken off pog champ which makes a lot of sense i think that's actually the correct decision but this guy's completely destroyed his legacy because he wanted to be a cunt an absolute arsehole 
or, or as the Americans say, a twat. I, I don't understand it. Like, what the fuck is going on there? Um, I mean, obviously, he ha- is entitled to his impi- opinion. Um, <laughs> but also, one can have a ill-informed opinion, and one can be an absolute arsehole, which is what this guy has, you know, showed himself to be. Sorry, Sign. Um, so basically, what's what's happened is he's lost his legacy. But um, yeah, I think it's up to us now to take his legacy, which he has tarnished, and turn it into something good. Um, the the community holds, you know, that um the people have come together for. Um, and so such. I just turned up my lights. I just turned up the fucking engine. Oh Jesus. Um, and so such. Like a lot of people are still keeping the words pause champ and the words pog you or whatever, but they're just changing the emotes to other faces. Like for example, Twitch have actually followed suit with this and. Pog Champ itself is now being uh, recycled, so every 24 hours it changes into another emote, another face, another person, which I think is a really good way to get the community to come together in this dark time. Um, so yeah, it's it's quite beautiful, um, but at the same time, and I'm actually heartbroken that this guy is like that. You know, it's kind of like um, I kind of feel like I've met my idol and he was a prick to me. You know what I'm saying? But I think everyone feels like that. That uh, is aware of Twitch. Uh, lingo and emotage, you know, I think that's, uh, yeah, it's a universal feeling of, it's betrayal, it fucking is, dude, this guy's betrayed us, oh, Jesus, yeah, um, I always forget, um, because I've installed the snow mod, um, what basically happens is, uh, the brakes aren't that good, um, because it's kinda slidey, um, so we're sliding around like absolute mad lads here, so, um, do forgive my, uh, terrible driving, I mean, actually, no, I'm an amazing driver, I don't know what you're talking about, um, yeah, one of the main memes of me playing this game is that I have flipped so many times, uh, to be fair, though, I haven't flipped in a wee while, so maybe we'll flip this stream, I don't know, um, but I, I do stream this quite a lot, can I just see something, am I actually doing a 24-hour job? Um, because that would take me like an hour and a half. I don't think I'm going to finish this. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, we'll drive to Budapest and then we'll we'll finish it there, all right? <laughs> I think that'll be kind of nice. Um, I actually like to... I'll record a whole bunch of these, I think. I think I'll record as many as I can. Um, but I kind of feel like I should maybe space them out by a day or two. Um, just so that there's like extra things I can talk about that I... Um, I mean, even if I talk about it on stream, that's okay, because this is kind of a different content place, you know. Um, but I have just realized that all my content has been live and then kind of left. So there's so much afterwards that I haven't utilized. And to be fair, like, I do watch a lot of pre-recorded content, you know. Like, I- I'm really into podcasts. I adore all that. Um, as well as, you know, just, like, my stuff on YouTube that I watch. It doesn't necessarily tend to be other people um, within the streamer sphere, though, to be fair. Um, it's more like uh, Top Gear stuff, like old Top Gear, not the new pish, you know. Oh, Jesus. Sorry, boss. I'm so sorry, boss. I, ju- I just killed a boss full of children. Um, sorry, children. Uh, sorry, children. Oh, Jesus. Remember Chef from South Park? Oh, my God, dude. The way that ended. Oh, God. Dude, I want to see how South Park do this, um, Capital Coop, man. That's gonna be a... That's gonna be a, a hell of an episode. Like, South Park's, like, the greatest social commentary that we've ever had, man. They've never been politically correct, and I think that's glorious. Um, too much political correctness just turns us into fascists, man, I'm telling you. Um, you've got to have a lot of opinions out there. Uh, I don't know, I mean, there's something, like... Uh, if you get an echo chamber, dude, that is, like, one of the scariest and most, um life-limiting places you can ever be, like, especially mind-limiting. Um, I like to understand people I disagree with. I like to get into that kind of sphere, um, because once you are, then you can actually, you know, expand your mind a little bit and have better empathy for those that are being fucking fannies. Do you know what I'm saying? (laughs) I mean, there's certain people and certain opinions which require zero empathy and are wrong. I mean, you can think of a a few of those off yourself, um, but... Uh, I mean, I say that, right, but I bet so many people have now got different opinions for what is absolutely unforgivable. Um, Those goddamn libtards! Uh, like, you know what I'm saying? Um, but, uh, yeah, for sure. They took our jobs! Remember that shit from South Park? Oh, God, we're going to South Park thing now. Uh, they took our jobs! Oh, Jesus. Um, the thing is, like, Simpsons as well, predicting all of this shit, man. I mean, what the fuck is going on there? I suppose if you make enough content, you'll be right eventually, you know? Not every single thing that on Simpsons has happened, but, um, I don't know, dude. 
I don't know. That that stuff fascinates me. And um, whenever I look at all that, it's like, oh god. But if you look too hard into it, man, you start like you know seeing ones and zeros floating around your head. Um, and you're like, dude, it's all a simulation, bro. It's a simulation, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it turns out a bit of that. Um, but I don't. I don't know, dude. I just. I'm going through this life with an open mind, um, wanting to learn as much as possible, not diving too deep, not overthinking. Oh, fuck, dude. I, I, when people overthink um, things that are going on, like in conversations and relationships, like I've done it before, um, but Christ almighty, dude. So whenever people always try and make something super deep, I, I just don't like it. It's so unattractive. It's like, fuck off. We're just having trying to have a lighthearted conversation, dude. Not everything has to be so serious or having underlying meaning of euphoric beauty. Uh, you know, it's like, fuck ah, brah. Uh, I don't know. Like, um, there's been a few people in my life that I've been having a bit of that where I've been like, oh, dude, uh, I, this is... Like, I'm just sitting there literally just like, yep. Yep. <laughs> like, what the fuck do you do? Like, sometimes you just want to hang out with the boys, have a beer, watch the game, you know, take your time, you know, not, not have to, you know, worry about someone being super, you know, overcritical and overthinking and trying to create some deeper meaning, dude. Um, and a modus operandi between, behind everything. Um, but, yeah, it, it is what it is, right? Yeah, I mean, I certainly do dive deep, and I did used to do it a lot more previously, but I think I've got a lot better grasp on my mindset now. Like, I'm actually able to, you know, um, understand when my thoughts would actually be appreciated, you know, um, or to make my deep thoughts be funny. So, like, uh, put in, like, some, I don't know, deep inspirational quote in a really inopportune moment for the laugh, like, for the banter, you know, like, that kind of shit's good. Um, but then sometimes you do have, um, any burp. Oh, oh, it's behind me. Dude, you ever get those burps that are just stuck in your fucking chest? I've had that, like, this entire podcast. I don't know what's going on. I'm falling apart here. I need to get some fuel. Um, oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Slow down. There we go. As you may, may or may not be able to tell, I've been listening to so much Bill Burr, dude, that, like, I'm picking up all of his mannerisms. Like, the way he goes, Oh, Jesus! And, uh, ladies! Like, it's become part of the Stefam as well. Like, we're all um, making fun of, uh, like, not making fun of, but we have this audio cue that you can put exclamation mark lady in the chat, and it goes, Ladies! Oh, yeah, like, from Bill Burr. Uh, and then it says, Holy shit, it's a lady! It's so funny. I fucking love it. Um... So yeah, like we we've got that, and uh, yeah, I I just really like his Monday morning podcast and uh, Thursday afternoon just before Friday podcast. Uh, they're they're very well put together, and um, yeah, Bill Burr has been a guiding light in all this madness, uh, this mad darkness, the dark side um, of oh hello hello tree. Now that, that's a well placed tree. Am I right? Look at that tree. Nice. That's a twenty one tree right there, bro. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, all this madness of 2020 and 21 so far. Um, it's been great to see uh, big, big Billy Blue Balls uh, trying to, you know, just bring a bit of normality. Uh, not even normality, man, but just fucking logic and hilarity. You know, if you don't laugh, you cry. Um, and I think a lot of people are losing their humor um, right now, man. But the only thing that's ever got us through anything is, like, you know, ripping the piss out of stuff, man. Like, that that's such a thing. Like, you most certainly are <laughs> that's something weird it works this way right like whenever you like a ghetto you'll end up being toxic and joking around with them making fun of them but like in a light-hearted sense and they do the same to you and it, it's super fucking cute i love that um and then it comes to the homies and you're always talking shit and having banter with the homies like that's a that's a standpoint you can't not expect that you know and if you're if you're not having that then you've got to question that relationship unless it's like a professional workplace relationship then it gets a bit different you know and also if it's a really serious situation then obviously you know you won't be trying to fuck around and like be too funny and also you can have this weird oh god i'm just dismantling my entire point here um <laughs> you can also have like uh awkward banter like someone's trying too hard to be funny and yeah, that's that's heavy cringe. Like you don't want to be in that situation. So it's a fine line, but I don't think it is really. I think the more you're willing to have banter with people, um, the more you're able to hone your actual banter radar um, of when to you know be serious and when not to be. You know, but life isn't as serious as we try and make out. You know, 
I think that we're always trying to be very divisive. Um, and the there's a there's a lot of people that think that they're being um, inclusive, but they're actually being super dis- divisive, um, which is a real shame, man. Like, uh, yeah, I see that on Twitter all the time, bro. There's a lot of people that get re- really fucking bought hurt um, about stuff that just, you know, for me, I'm looking at it like, why the fuck do you even care about this, dude? You know, that's not a big deal. You could have just, like, for example, right, um, this isn't necessarily from Twitter, but, like, I always believe that your reaction creates your reality. Like, that's always been a thing for me. Um, and I noticed this was so evident when I came back home um, from walking. I walked across northern Spain, um, which was, as you can imagine, quite stonks. Um, and I saw a little bit of it, a bit of it then, but then I also walked from Scotland to Switzerland um, over six months. Like, literally, my two feet. Just walked the entire way. Absolutely. Stonkaroonies. But when I came back home, I realized everyone was still the same, and everyone was still complaining about the same shit. And I was like, yo, what the fuck, dude? Um, why are you still worried about this? You know, there was, like, like just silly things, you know? Mainly my dad. Uh, my dad and I have... Oh, we don't need to stop here. Are we all right? Is a train coming? Ah! No, I'm all right. I made it. I made it. It's all right. Um... Oh god, that was close. Uh, my dad and I have always had a weird relationship. Like, um, he fell out with my big brother a lot growing up. Um, you know, like plates were thrown at walls, and you know they, you know, they never came to blows, but they were always like emotionally tearing each other's faces off. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I obviously got the second hand of that being the middle brother, and like aware during all of it. Um, which wasn't nice. Um, so I always saw my dad as being a dickhead, um, and my big brother being the victim and all that, you know, which was true. Um, but as we grew older, dad got better. He's not perfect by any means now, but he's certainly a lot better than he used to be. And I think it's weird. I think it's more because we're now men. Like, my little brother's 18. I'm 24. I just had my birthday, by the way. Happy birthday to me. Um, stonks, dude. I'm an absolute boomer now. Uh, and my big brother, Richie, is going to be 30 this year, so... Um, it's cool. It's cool to see us all grow up and be better, um, than we were previously. Um, am I, get, am I getting on a... No, oh, I'm going through customs here. I was like, am I getting on a ferry? What, what's going on? Um, but yeah, like, I realised that he... I didn't ever kind of change his mentality in the time I'd been away. Like, I changed so much. I'd become another person, like, legitimately was someone else who had such a broader sense of mind and perspective, and I, I wasn't afraid to, like... Be like, this is bollocks. Why are you worried about this? You know, oh, I could have went to the right there. Um, which basically meant that, like, I realized that if people don't push themselves out of their comfort zone and don't um, do something interesting and explore their ambition, um, I don't know, just kind of just be explorers, you know, adventurers, like, within their own mindset and um, just in life and see other cultures and people. You're not going to grow, like, at all, dude. And I was like, fuck, man, I'm... I'm only thinking like this because I've been away. My reaction is my reality to all of these problems that my dad was seeing as, you know, earth-shattering, massive mountains. I was looking at them and realizing they were just tiny wee molehills, you know? Not even molehills, dude, just fucking wormholes, you know? Not wormholes, that gets on a whole fucking different subject. Like, like, worm, worm, uh, you know, if a worm comes up, dude, and it's, like, raining, and there's a little bump, like one of those. Uh, a worm, worm bump. That's what I'm calling it that. Worm bump, right? Shut the fuck up with him. Um, <laughs> no, but for real, dude. And I was like, okay, okay. Well, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Um, reaction equals reality. So whenever someone's driving and they get road rage, you're letting that other cunt that like cut you off um, ruin your entire day. He, you're giving that person so much power, right? Over by the way, pro to perform. Nice. That's what that trailer says right there. Sorry for cutting off that. Um, they're giving that other person so much power over the rest of your day. Um, and it's like, why are you doing that? If you realize this guy was an arse, right? But people make mistakes. That does happen. You know, I've certainly cut people off. Like, I've went the wrong way down uh, one-way streets. Wrong way! Down a one-way street! Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I've, I've done that. It's happened. Um, and if there had been someone else there, I would have been the arsehole. But um, if you just say to yourself, fuck, that was close. And that's it. You know, you just you move on. You're like, all right, but I, I'm okay. You know, I, I'm healthy. I'm still alive. Didn't crash the car. Didn't, uh, you know, smash the beer in the passenger seat. You know, everything's cool. I mean, not drinking. Not drinking when you're driving, though. I mean, I was saying, like, you know, you've got the, the beer, like, you know, you just bought the shop. You know, like, yeah, not don't drink drive, right? I'm not, don't drink drive. That's absolute dickhead. The thing is, though, I'm driving a truck right now having a gin and tonic. So what what does that mean? Am I right? <laughs> does that count? That doesn't count, right? 
I'm not being hypocritical, am I? No. No, uh, no. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not gonna, no. Uh, yeah, so... Yeah, reaction equals reality. So, like, I had that so many times. Like, whenever I was driving with uh, either my dad or, like, the workies that I was working with in Glasgow, you'd see moments, man, where they just get so fucking livid about someone cutting them off or, I don't know, just, like, someone stuck in the middle of the road. And I was like, fucking hell, why are you giving this person so much power to make your life miserable? And I think so many of us do that, man. We're just letting all these absolute arseholes that don't deserve any of our time, you know have so much power over us we're begrudging ourselves thinking that we're spiting them you know what i'm saying like it creates some fucking major negative situation within your life uh that you just do not need that shit bro um so yeah i i realized that like growing up and traveling and stuff and i really do miss travel dude like covid's fucked everything dude like uh realistically though i don't think it would have been possible this year anyway um unless i well actually no because covid wouldn't have happened i would have kept my job i would have had money um but i'd love to do it uh, like a walk on stream um i think that'd be so cool like a live stream across some countries i think that'd be so interesting um as well as the fact like um i, I don't know i'd love, really like to do a kayak journey um i think that'd be super interesting hold on i'm try trying to trying to drink here while driving a truck guys it's a lot more difficult than you might imagine oh jesus i'm trying to hold it together here hold it together i think we're pretty straight here looking at the sat now i think we should be all right mm. yeah but the kayak journey would be so cool like, i was thinking of kayak in europe so from the top of scotland all the way like through canals and uh around the sea the, the biggest like most intense part would be the english channel um but it'd be so fucking cool dude um, i might probably take about six months to do it uh, and like, imagine my upper body strength by the end. I would look like a fucking chiseled marble Greek statue, bro. You know what I'm saying? I look sensational. I mean, I already do, obviously. You know, <sighs> I'm so healthy. You know, you can just you can just tell. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but dude, it'd be so much fun, and I think it'd be uh, uh, just a, a beautiful way to bring a lot of people together. You know. Um, but yeah, I think it's irresponsible to do something like that. And it also wouldn't be very fun um, in a COVID environment where everyone is, you know, not afraid of people, but a lot more wary of letting strangers um, into their homes, um, as well as having beers with strangers and stuff. Like if you were going places and all the pubs are closed, you know, it's just, it's not an enjoyable experience. And like, I know how you're maybe thinking there about me saying... Uh, you know, having having um, <laughs> strangers into your home, you're like, what the fuck were you doing? But like, uh, couch surfing is how I did it. So basically, all you did is you had to message, um, like you made a profile. It was like a Facebook for uh, people opening up their doors to travelers that were coming through. Um, so you get to meet interesting new people. Basically, traveling standing still um, is how I like to define it. It was really nice. Um, and my first one was in East Kilbride, which is an absolute shithole just uh, south of Glasgow. And uh, oh my god, I was going to camp in a fucking uh, golf course, dude. You know, and it was absolute pissing down. And I opened up the app and I was like, fuck it, making an account, made an account, hiding underneath a bush because it was pissing down. Um, and, uh, just put, put a shout out there saying, Yo, this is my first ever time using couch surfing. I'm walking across Europe. Does anyone have a spare bed or a couch or a floor, uh, for this, this evening? And then this guy replied about half an hour later saying, Yes, I do, but I won't be, uh, home until about half nine. And it was already, like, eight. So, I was like, oh, Jesus. I was like, okay, no worries. So, I went into the city, um, or further into it. Pardon me. It's more like a big town, I suppose. Um, just so I could get some, like, a coffee and stuff and just kind of relax and wait. And when I arrived, he was the most lovely bloke I'd ever met, dude. He's actually been in stream a couple of times, which was really cool. Um, and his girlfriend was amazing as well. And uh, we ended up playing, like, uh, the PlayStation 4 uh, virtual reality thing. This is, like, four years ago, so it's not amazing. But it was fucking un unreal. This is my first time ever using VR, you know? I was like, oh, my days, it's so cool. You know, otherwise, I would have been in a freezing cold tent in the pish and rain camping in a golf course, dude. So that was my, like, main <laughs> kind of realization where I was like, okay, this is my epiphany of realizing that couch surfing was the way forward. So from there, I was um, messaging like, trying to book places to stay like three, three days ahead of me at all times. Um, uh, like staying with other people. So basically you don't have to pay for it. 
um, you are most likely to get some food uh, whenever you go there. Their only payment is really just your company. So you rock up, you you just you become a friend for the night. You know, it's amazing, really good crack. Um, and if you stay for a few days, then you know they can show you around their city and their or their village or whatever, and you can have some beers and it's just really wholesome, man. A, a beautiful time. Um, and you get to meet make friends all over the world. Um, so I did that from Scotland all the way to Switzerland. Um, which was fantastic. And a few of the places that I'd actually uh, stayed at, they ended up um, talking to other travelers that were going through. And there was this one girl um, who was behind me and she was walking from the Netherlands to Rome. And I was like, bro, that's so fucking cool. So it was in Belgium that, um, wait, 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 no, no, no. It was uh, in the Netherlands. How the fuck did it work? Who, who, who connected us? Fuck, I can't remember who connected us, right? But it was in Belgium or France that this lady, um, I can't remember her name, bro. It was a lady, right? That she uh, then messaged me saying, yo, there's this other girl walking through here. She's about four days behind you. You should totally meet her, you know, um, so you're not just ahead of her the whole time. I was like, fuck yeah, let's do it. So um, I hanged around a place where we were, um, just like kind of walking around, you know, kind of sideways and back and forth, you know, not just so that I was slowing down. Um, and we ended up meeting. I ended up walking together for about four days. Um, and I actually went home on the last one. I went to uh, at Switzerland and Geneva. And Geneva um, was the flight, but it was Lausanne was where I walked to, um, which is just beside Geneva. It's on the same lake. Uh, it's really beautiful. Um, gorgeous place, Switzerland, man. Jesus. Uh, very expensive, though. Um, but it was weird. There was, like, pizza places on trails. I don't know what the fuck was going on in that place. But it was really nice, you know. Um, but, yeah. Gorgeous uh, Dutch girl, um, Micah was her name as well. So so amazing to get to walk with someone because I'd walked for over six months at that point with just myself, you know. No one else had walked at all with me. Um, well, I suppose one girl walked with me for about three hours. A um, uh, Romanian girl uh, outside a place called Balach, but that was in Scotland, so that was right in the beginning. Um, she's lovely, man. She's like a badass travel chick and she does a lot of uh, posting on Instagram and stuff. I really like. Uh, keeping up to date with her, um, but anyway, uh, it was just, it was amazing, like, I really did enjoy getting to do that, um, and it turns out that, uh, <laughs> one of the, one of the girls that I stayed with, I keep saying girls as if I'm a fucking womanizer, dude, I wasn't as badass a boy as I am today back then, I swear to you, man, kind of wish I was, to be honest, uh, but, yeah, it, it is what it is, I was a young, young gun, you know, I was only 19, um, turning 20, I base as I say, I literally grew balls, you know, on the last year. Like my voice has gone down. I feel a lot more confident in myself. You know, I think I look good. Like I feel good about myself now. Like it's, it, I don't know what's happening. It is, it is what it is. I suppose you know, coming into my prime. Um, plus, you know, uh, it's kind of. I mean, imagine coming into your prime during COVID. What the fuck's going on here, dude? At, at least we, at least we have internet and stuff, and we can play Valorant with people. People shy. Um, but yes, yes. Um, yeah, I get. A, I'm in a place called Gouda, which is in the Netherlands, where they make cheese. We call it Gouda because we're fucking fannies. Um, Gouda cheese or Gouda is how they pronounce it. Right? You go as if you're going to spit on someone, and you're saying Loch. You know, um, it's not Loch, by the way. Any of you fucking wanks out there. Um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, <laughs> the ghetto that I met there, um, I then stayed with another ghetto in Veert, which is also in the, in the Netherlands, um, at the bottom, near a place called Maastricht, um, which is like kind of juts into Belgium. It's a really nice place. Um, they ended up meeting each other in a Greek island, right, in, in a pub in a Greek island, and they were talking to each other because they were both Dutch, you know, you can imagine, they're just getting on. And then I somehow or another get brought up in the conversation. And then they were like, well, hold on, I, I know that guy. Uh, that that's that mad Scottish guy that was walking across Europe. And they're like, oh, fuck, yeah. So uh, they got out their phones and got out couch surfing and then um, started talking to me, added me on Facebook, and they sent a picture of themselves. And I was oh, my God. Like, they'd met each other across Europe, on the other side of Europe, you know, from the Netherlands to Greece, man. Uh, it was so fascinating um, how they all came together. The universe works in amazing ways, man. Like, kindred spirits do come together. I thought that was beautiful. And that was just such a nice story about the fact of how couch surfing just connects us, you know. I, I should have really... I need to tell them that. I need to tell them that story. Because I think that's, um... That, yeah, that's, that's a perfect... That's a fucking way in, isn't it, guys? 
That's the way to some publicity right there. Get the channel fucking stonking. That's what I'm talking about, guys. I'm flying, by the way. 72 miles an hour now, man. I'm absolutely flying in this truck. Look at me. DPD delivery. You know about fuck around. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, so it's really cool. I recommend couch surfing, but the problem is, is like fucking COVID. I don't know how couch surfing is dealing with that. I mean, so many places are struggling because of COVID, right? Um, when it comes down to actually trying to, you know, continue business exchanges, man, it's rough. Real rough. I mean, imagine, like, people you haven't met yet that you don't know have tests coming into your house. Like, I don't even know if it still exists anymore. Oh, but the, oh Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Uh, if you're listening on audio only, I, um, I had a little bump there. Uh, just a little bump on the truck. Nothing too serious. Nothing too serious at all. I just need to reverse this out. You know, we'll just reverse it out. And it'll buff out. Don't worry about it. Right. Catch you after, Logman. Thanks for being around. Catch you after, Chief. Thank you. Uh, good luck to you, mate. Good luck to you. Merry Christmas. Well, I say Merry Christmas because it's snowing, right? Happy New Year. Hey, I, I'm about off, boys. I'm about off. I remember once I was at a party. It was like 2017 or something. Um, Maybe 16. And I was meeting up with a whole bunch of old friends or from high school, but I never really had proper friends in high school. I had weird friends. Um, where, well, I say weird friends as in, like, I had a lot of acquaintances. Um, I was weird in school, man. I was a very different boy. Um, but a few of them I really stayed pals with, and I got to meet up with again in Glasgow and stuff uh, recently, and that was really nice. Um, but, um, yeah, I went back, and it was, uh, it was a good house party and stuff. It was good crack, but, um, yeah, I realized... That um, fuck! I just had another memory there. Just kind of popped in. I thought forgot about it. Um, <laughs> shit! The half of that, dude. The, the, the way the mind works is so weird. Like when you're drunk, you forget shit, and then that just came right into my mind. What just happened there? Wow. Okay, I forgot that it happened. Oh shit! I'm not talking about that. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. All right, uh, whoa, whoa. Okay, um, yeah, but basically it was weird, man. Like, um, you know, I was saying happy new year to that truck driver there that I totally didn't crash into. He crashed into me, right? Um, well, I walked around, this was in February, saying happy new year. I was so nervous, so weird, so awkward, so trying to, like, stand out that by saying happy new year and shaking people's hands in February was my way to do that. Like, I would never do that today. Like, I see how cringe that is. But I suppose, you know, that was also when I was, like, 17, right? So that's that's a good long while away, realistically. Like, I've grown a lot since then. Um, but still, you know, only seven years in that, dude. So, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, when I look back in that, like, if, I, if someone was doing that to me, I'd be like, yo, what the fuck, bro? Like, that's kind of childish. You know, like, just, like, that's not funny. And, yeah, it was, it was not cool. Um, so, yeah, like, whenever you can look back and you realise how much you've grown and how, how different your banter is, man, I think I'm fucking hilarious now. You know, I've always realised, like, as I've grown, I've realised how hilarious my big brother Richard is as, as well. Like, he has some absolute bants, dude. Like, uh, especially when it comes down to posting on Instagram and uh, Facebook and stuff. Like, he's just always got banter. He's got a really good way about him to, uh, I don't know, kind of off-the-cuff humour. Um, his wit is sensational, honestly. Um, easily be a comedian, or at least like a. I mean, he could do podcasts. I think I'll certainly get him on, and we can talk shit. Um, at some point, you know, whenever uh, I've kind of decided how I'm doing this podcast, I don't even know what to call it now, you know. Um, and another thing is what I was thinking of. I think that's too much, is it? And another thing, I suppose it is. You know, I could just literally call it the Stephen Lee podcast. You know, something very simple. Um, I think that's probably what I'll just call it for now. Um, just, I mean, We Hours Podcast works as well, though, right? We Hours Podcast. I like that. I don't, I don't know, though, because it's not necessarily. But I suppose it is. But it doesn't all have to be... I don't know. Uh, do you know what would be really cool, though? We could, like... Like, because see how Pikachu's on the side there? We could change that to various people, because you can you can actually get like Star Wars characters and like anime girls, an anime girl, uh, well. uh so you can get that kind of shit. Um, I could like I could ask people what they want as their passenger, and then when I have them on the podcast, they're beside me. That's so fucking smart. Think about that. That's actually cool, and we can like redecorate the truck and stuff like to their liking. Dude, that's nice. 
I like that. I can ask them what they want in there. I need to download a whole bunch of character models, though, so that we can make this viable. But, dude, that's fucking cool. That's actually a really smart idea. Then Wee Hours Podcast actually kind of works, though. Um, I like that. I can't call it Wee Hours Trucking Podcast, because if I do that, then I'm going to get actual truckers um, searching it. And then I'm going to be like, yeah, I know nothing about trucks. I don't even know what kind of truck this is. I know I do, actually. It's a Scania. A Scania R-Series, babe. Um, you know, I'm, I say Scania R-Series, dude. Actually, I think a trucker sounds like this. Yeah, that's right. I got a Scania R-Series. You know, it takes me to the coffee shop. To the diner, you know, I come down to the diner and get my sausage, eggs, and bacon, and my coffee. It's the best coffee in the land. Cause I am a trucky man. Um, sorry. Um, yeah, so I think that'd be kind of cool, actually. I kind of thinking that the 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 most likely person to get on first will be my friend True, um, because we do talk a lot, but we haven't spoken recently, um, at length. And I think that would be a great way to catch up, is like on a podcast. Um, so yeah, also this is going to be a podcast where anything goes. Um, it will be very... I'm not going to give a fuck about speaking about whoever. It will be as if I'm just talking to the boys. Um, but it's content, because I think too many people are too afraid that they'll be cancelled, or people will change the way they, they think about someone um, because of what they put out there. I'm not looking to be famous. I'm not looking to try and akin to... Uh, whatever the current popular, uh, you know, understanding is in content creation. Um, for example, dude, you see those fucking people on Twitter? Like, mainly ghettos, and I understand ghettos get a lot of shit by trolls, but, like, whenever they highlight trolls spamming shit in their chat or saying, hey, can you fuck me? Like, inside their chat, and they make content from that all the time, I, for one, have said that whenever trolls come in, make them content, but the fact that this has been reposted so much on Twitter, it's got to a point now where it's almost as if they're looking for those trolls to make content with. Like, that's becoming... I can't say the main thing, because obviously that's... Oh, JJ, slow down! I can't, I can't say that's the main thing, because it's not. I mean, a lot of these... It's not just ghettos, though. A lot of anyone that um, creates content are fucking fantastic, a lot better than me. Um, and it's fascinating. I adore to see people that are really... Um, you know, leaning into the craft and so capable. Oh, Jesus, that was a head-on. I got a head-on there. But yeah, like, I've seen so many people posting shit now where they're just really baiting out trolls. And I just think that's just the wrong way to do it. You're just, you're just supporting that hate. I understand there's, like, the context of the content, though, is to say, um... Like, no, that is not how you do it! You know, it's like, and then they school them, they own them, or whatever the fuck. I get that, that makes sense, I understand. But whenever I watch that, I'm just, I'm heavy cringing. I'm like, why are you giving this person any form of limelight here? I understand, like, because you've got to stand up, you've got to say something, you've got to make it evident that this isn't acceptable. But once you post that, like, over five times or whatever the fuck, it starts to become ironic like you're starting to give them far more power than you are your actual community and it's just weird man i don't know i'm not a ghetto i haven't had this issue actually happen to me um that much i mean i've had a lot of bams come into my chat like try and troll and then like uh like they enter with absolute bullshit troll banter and then i ping back and make content from that that happens all the time i do get that um but yeah i'm not targeted because of how i look or whatever um, on stream, um, or at least not often, you know, some people like to say, why, people think I look gay, right, and, like, I actually take that as a major compliment, because, I don't know, um, gay people tend to have, like, a fantastic way to look after themselves, man, they're always chiseled, I'm not trying to say that every single gay guy's chiseled, right, it's kind of like saying, every model's chiseled, but I suppose, you know, that's just, what you see, uh, and, but I mean, right now we got plus model. I'm fucking digging a hole here. Anyone got a a fucking digger here? Oh, what, I was going to say HGV. That's a heavy goods vehicle. What are you talking about here? I don't know, like to transport my my uh dirt. I don't know what fuck's going on here. Moving on. Um, yeah, like uh, I think I think a lot of gay people are a lot more into um fashion and looking good and keeping themselves. Uh, smart, man. And, like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I certainly keep on top of myself. Um, but I'm just, like, a raging Scotsman, man. I really don't know what's going on with me. 
Like, I feel so privileged and I blush like fuck, dude. Um, like, the amount of people that are disappointed that I'm not bi, I'm like, I'm sorry, man. You know, I mean, I'm, everyone's a little bit gay. You've got to have, like, 10% in there so you know what a handsome man looks like so that you can actually, uh, you know, kind of make yourself look more like that. I've always said that, dude. Like, I know that Geralt of Rivia is a fucking babe, right? Um, I know that uh, uh, the guy... The, uh, Jason Momoa, that guy, he's a babe, dude, I know that, I know that Joeverse is a babe, you know what I'm saying, but when it comes down to it, man, like, you know, I'm not, I'm not thinking of sticking my dick in them, you know, that's, that's not, that's not part of my vision right there, uh, I don't know, it's, it's interesting whenever that happens, um, but you never see on Twitter me complaining about, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, Jesus, yeah. Also, uh, another thing. <laughs> oh, see, I think that's why I want to call the podcast this, because that's why I keep bringing it up. And another thing, you know, this is just going to be my ranting place, you know? The Rant Podcast with Stephen Lee. Um, I don't know, man. I've literally muted a whole bunch of people that I respect, but I just can't be arsed with how much they complain um anymore dude like it's so toxic like i understand these people have influence and they want to bring a bring across like a really you know a positive optimistic environment but there's so many times man when i just look at it and i'm like dude stop bringing up the same old shit like it's been i don't know i don't know it, it is what it is like i i do i unsubscribe from it so hard now that i don't really even have an opinion of it except for i don't want to see it um, I just can't be arsed when well, I'm seeing people complain or giving trolls limelight, man. Why is it called the fucking limelight? I always wondered that. Why lime? Why not limon or melon or Guadeloupe? Wait, is that not a country? Guadeloupe's a country. That's not a fruit, is it? Guadeloupe? Gua- Guadeloupe? I-, I swear down there's like, there's a fruit within this similar wording here, right? I don't know, a, a-, a-, a loop? A galoop? Uh, uh, probably not. Right, moving on. Um... Where the fuck are we? Almost at Budapest, yeah. Once we get to Budapest, I'll end the podcast. Uh, I'm gonna look at my map here. Where the fuck are we? See, if we're like fucking miles past it, man. I'll be. So- oh, we're fucking miles past Budapest. We're actually miles, dude. We're we're almost at Graz. Jesus, Stefan, you fucked it. I'll tell you what. I'll get to Graz. I'll get to Graz, and then we'll chill out. You know, Mardi Graz. Love it. That's what I'm talking about. Um, but yes, I think that uh. This podcast has been good crack, dude. It's literally just me rambling for like an hour, um, driving a truck, you know. Well, in the beginning, it was just spinning around. I was kind of just introducing myself, I suppose. Um, if you're here, you probably do know who I am because this is the first one. And I really do appreciate that if you've listened this far. If you have got this far, say um, six nipples inside the chat uh, or in the comments. You'll understand what that means if you're uh, in the community already, but basically I was unaware that my cat had six nipples when he's a boy. Um, But then I remembered that I only really remember seeing their nipples when they were younger, and now I'm unsure if they still have nipples. And I'm trying to find my cat's nipples, and I don't know if that's weird to be searching for my cat's nipples. Is that weird? Uh, That's weird, isn't it? It is is kind of weird. Um, But I know that female ones certainly have six nipples, because, you know, they probably have, like, a big litter, or they're likely to have a big litter. I don't know, man. Uh, but yeah, we had an extensive conversation about this um, on stream, which was uh, something else. And if you want to be part of those extensive conversations about cat nipples um, and such, uh, then please do follow twitch.tv forward slash Mr. Stephen Lee. Um, I do also play Valorant at night time, but I'm on another channel for that called Steffi Was Taken. Um, I'll put both of them inside the, uh, inside the description right there. But it's just good fun, man. I really do enjoy... Um, doing both of those things like on on mr stephen lee we tend to just like go all over the joint and it's mainly like super interactive uh content and i love that i think that's really cool i think that's one of my favorite things is to be able to speak to people i think that's the only reason that i ever got into twitch um but on Steffi was taken it's more about gameplay um but i'm still obviously having banter the boys i'm talking to and stuff and uh it's nice man i really do enjoy it um and people can just like you know still chat in the chat but it's just like a longer time between me talking and stuff um but that's cool that's cool and also it means that i don't have to record every single game that i play of fucking valorant because i've got to the stage now where i make 
content. Uh, no, no, no. Whenever I'm doing any gameplay, I feel I need to make content from it. Not to be uploaded, but it has to be recorded in case anything badass happens. Um, because there's nothing worse as a content creator than having something amazing happen and then realizing you didn't hit record. Like, I literally checked um, if I had hit record for the podcast right there. Like, I freaked out a little bit. You know, like, there's nothing worse than that, I'm telling you. Um, however, yeah, sometimes um, it's good to let moments go and just have them be between you and another person. Um, but, you know, if you're on Valorant and you do an absolute sick play and then you look over and you check and you haven't been recording, yeah, that that, that, that breaks some hearts and also breaks some monitors, you know what I'm saying? No, but it's good, it's good crack. So, on Steph, he was taken, I'll be recording, or streaming, um, to that, uh, which means that I don't have to fill up my fucking hard drive space. Because I am limited yet again. I completely and utterly cleared all my hard drives, dude. Well, not completely, but, like, I took down from, like, 3.4 gigabyte full, um, no terabyte full, um, right the way down to about 1 terabyte full, uh, which was, you know, quite a lot of deletion, as you may imagine. Um, however, I have uh, kind of refilled that, so I need to sort it out. And also, oh my god, my folders! My fucking folders are such a shambles! Like, an actual shambles. I don't know how I have managed to create such a pigsty of a, um, like, my desktop has, like, four or five folders that each say, um, tidy up your desktop, or desktop shit, or dump shit, you know, literally just putting stuff away, saying, no, this is where you put your stuff, alright, this is where we're putting it, and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, completely populated with, uh, random files again on my desktop, they're just, it's just so handy to get to, I don't really know, um, and also, Google Chrome is downloading to stupid files, like, stupid folders, sorry, um, all the time now, and it's really getting on my, my boobies, I'm telling you, I was going to say my booties. I have, I have a, do you have multiple booties? I suppose if they're on your feet, but not on your bottom. You don't have multiple bottoms, do you? You don't have a front bottom if you're a lady, but that's another story, I think. Um, anyway, um, we're in Graz now, so we have made it. I'm going to go park up, and then we can, uh, we can chill out. Is that truck going right? That truck is not going right. Now there's that one. Right, come on, truck. Right, go on. Go on. Oh! Is he going? Is he going? He's not going. All right. I mean, I did kind of- Oh my- Now you decide to go- Fuck you! Fuck you! There we go, sorry. Sorry, uh, I had a bit of road rage, guys. It's not as if I talked about that earlier. Uh, hey! Full circle! Look at that! What an absolute champ I am! The fact that I could come full circle. Dude, I'm such a good content creator, dude. Wow. What a- What a fan tab dozy storyteller. Speaking of fan tab and storytellers, I've been watching a lot of Billy Connolly recently. I absolutely adore that man. Been watching him. He's got me through a lot of shit over these last few months, man. Beautiful man. Oh, I always greet uh, either at him, his jokes, or uh, the most recent documentary when he was talking about uh, retiring and stuff, man. And like, there were so many people there that were just giving him a lot, a lot of love, man. I was just in tears, mate. Beautiful. Now, oh, what an absolute king, the biggian. Absolute proper staunch lad. I'm gonna park in this bus stop because fuck the police. Am I right, guys? Let's park in the bus stop. Oh, I'm kind of on the curb, but that's a that's a proper Scottish park right there. I'll save up, save and load, save game, and I'll, I'll title it. Um, first, uh, I just put Stephen Lee podcast right. I know, I know it's not as interesting, but it is what it is. First, Stephen Lee podcast save. There we are. Thank you very much for tuning on in today, then. Uh, I don't know. Um, please comment if you enjoyed this. It's literally just like an hour of me driving around and talking, but I think it's a nice background. Um, this will also be on um, any other platform I can uh, put it up on, most likely SoundCloud. Um, Spotify, if you don't have to pay for it. I don't know if you do. You probably do. I don't know. Uh, iTunes, if you don't have to pay for it yet again. Um, and, of course, YouTube. Uh, YouTube will be the main place because you'll get to see the visuals of the truck and stuff. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you didn't, um, tell me. But uh, be nice. People shy, uh, please. Just say, yo, what the fuck? Stephen, this is shit. Like, be nice like that, you know? Just, like, say it like that. Quasi, I expect you to talk shit. Um, as I say, if you got this far, please say six nipples. Um, then you understand, you know? I think we're going to do that every single every single podcast. There'll be, like, a word at the end that you have to say. They say that you got to the end, you know what I'm saying? But eventually, some consoles just start fucking skipping through until they get to that word. Um, 
Oh, yeah. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, anything you want me to answer, just put it in the comments as well, and I'll get it for the next podcast. Um, I think legitimately I'm probably going to do this every two days or so and upload them and then see. Um, it's nice to be able to do it in the afternoon um, just before stream and then uh, see how things go. But, uh, yeah, uh, big love, um, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much for coming on in. Slant your face. Slant your face. I love you very much, and uh, don't be a cunt. Smile. <laughs>